Welcome back, 8th grade. Today we're talking about order of operations with all the real numbers we've just been talking about. So we just talked about single operations with real numbers. Uh, that means integers, positives and negatives, uh, positive and negative decimals, fractions, and mixed numbers. Please put your name at the top uh, and get the date and title on this as we get going. So Gemma is the best at putting things together. Uh, you all know my story. Me and Gemma go way back. Um, we just built things together. We just meshed together. Um, we both have a love of math. We both have a love of order of operations. We both have a love of uh, well-dressed teachers and making videos, talking to yourself in a classroom. So we get along really well. So she's really great at putting things together, order of operations, combining uh, terms or values. So the notes we have to have is that Gemma, of course, stands for grouping symbols. What are the grouping symbols we know? Well, the obvious one is parentheses. We also know that brackets can group things together. There's also the radical sign, radical dude. Um, or the square root symbol is what it is, but it's called the radical. Uh, there's the absolute value absolute value bars, so the absolute value sign is a group and symbol, whatever's on the inside is grouped together and must be done first. And finally, the division bar, or the fraction bar, tells us, hey, group and do everything on top, and group and do all the operations on bottom, and then do the division. After the grouping symbols, we want to focus on exponents. Exponents come next, then multiplication and division from left to right, whichever is further left we do first, whether it's multiplication or division, and same with addition and subtraction. Whichever is further left, whether it be an addition or a subtraction operation, whichever is further left, we do that next. Now, let's check this out. This is something you might find in a lot of classrooms across America, and I know that some teachers teach it well, um, but I'm not going to keep calm and use PEMDAS because PEMDAS isn't as good as Gemma, so we're not going to follow PEMDAS. Let me tell you why. Um, the first, we just talked about grouping symbols. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear and Sally, or parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, in that order, doesn't always work out because parentheses aren't the only grouping symbol. So that's strike one. Strike two is that PEMDAS, and I know a lot of teachers teach us better and make this point, but PEMDAS makes it seem like a multiplication always comes before division. Gemma tells us that whichever is further left of those two comes first. So that's strike number two. I'm going to show you an example real quick. So you could have 8 divided by 2 times 4. Gemma would tell us, of course, we do the division first. It's further to the left. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 4 times 4 would be 16. Now, if someone was following PEMDAS and just going by the letters, they would do the multiplication first. 2 times 4 would be 8. They'd say 8 divided by 8 is 1. And you can see they're way off. So that's strike 2. And then finally, addition and subtraction. Again, I know teachers teach it well across America, but PEMDAS just doesn't work as well as Gemma um, for this reason. If we just change this to 8 minus 2 plus 4, Gemma is going to tell us addition and subtraction left to right. So 8 minus 2 is 6, and 6 plus 4 would be equal to 10. But again, if you just follow the letters, you would do the addition first. 2 plus 4 is 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. Again, you're way off with PEMDAS. So I will not keep calm. No, I'll get furious and let you know that you need to follow Gemma. And she'll never lead you wrong. So let's see what this looks like in practice. This first example says... Uh, the quantity of, or grouped, negative 3, negative, 3 to the 4th power, plus 5, minus 2 times negative 9. Okay, so there's a couple operations going on in there. The thing I need to point out to you is this. That negative sign does not get raised to the 4th power. Ex exponents only affect what's right next to them. So if we wanted negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, I would have to put that in parentheses and group it all together and then raise that whole whatever was parentheses or in parentheses together. That would be raised to the fourth power. But as it is, the exponent comes before an addition or subtraction or a positive or a negative sign. The exponent goes first. So it's going to say this is just 3 to the fourth power. Let's think about what 3 to the fourth power is. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And the second group of 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So we have 81. And like I said, the negative sign doesn't get raised to the exponent. So it's just going to kind of 
it's going to attach itself to whatever the exponent spits out. Um, so we're doing this grouping symbol first, and we just got the opposite of what 3 to the 4th is, the opposite of 81 plus 5, minus 2 times negative 9. Next, Gemma is going to say do whatever is grouped still. So negative 81 plus 5, we have more negatives than positives, um, but they're different signs or different colored uh, algebra tiles, so we have to cancel out the zero pairs. We're going to subtract the values. So this one would be negative 81. Oh, this would be negative 76. We're going to have negative 76 minus 2 times negative 9. So next we need to do multiplication. Gemma says multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So this is negative 76 minus 2 times negative 9 would be negative 18. And of course, right here, I want to play add ops. I don't like subtraction as much as addition. So I can say we can subtract a negative or add a positive. Um, and again, we have more negatives than positives, but different signs. So we're going to have a negative answer. I'll subtract the values. We would get negative 58. All good so far, I hope. Another cool thing to see here, and you don't have to write this if it doesn't make sense, is what if we wanted to play add ops first, and we had said that this was plus negative 2 times negative 9? Well, we would get the same thing. We'd have negative 76 plus, and then negative 2 times negative 9 would be the same signs when multiplying means it turns positive. So that would be a positive 18. 18. We'd still have plus positive 18. Isn't that great? Okay, the second example we have is the absolute value. These are absolute value bars. Make sure you write them, and we're going to talk about them and think about them. The absolute value of 2 and 3 fourths minus 5 and 1 third plus 1 half to the third power. Oh, this looks daunting, but we can do it. We just need to follow Gemma. Gemma's going to say do what's grouped first, so let's do what's grouped first. Uh, 2 and 3 fourths minus 5 and 1 third. There I'm thinking we're adding or subtracting uh, mixed numbers whenever you're adding or subtracting uh, fractions, you need to have like denominators, so you're talking about the same size pieces. Um, so 4 and 3 both go into 12. This would be the absolute value of 2 and how many 12s? Well, we multiplied 4 times 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. Minus or plus a negative. You can see I just played add ups right there. Plus a negative 5 and how many 12s is 1 third? Well, we multiplied the 3 times 4, so we need to multiply the numerator times 4, 4 12s. And then we're going to add the 1 half to the third power. Okay. 2 and 9 twelfths plus negative 5 and 4 twelfths. Let's do a little work to the side. Um, we know that our answer to just this addition is going to be negative. We have more negatives than positives. We have more negatives than positives. Uh, but we need to subtract the values because they're different signs. So we can say 5 and 4 twelfths minus... 2 and 9 twelfths. Well, I can't take away 9 twelfths from 4 twelfths. It's not 5 twelfths because we're trying to take 9 from 4. We don't have 9 to take away, so we need to trade out one of these holes. So we'll take, we'll take it down from 5 holes to 4. And one of those holes we could trade in for how many twelfths? Well, 12 twelfths would be one full bar, like a fraction bar. So 12 twelfths, and we already had 4, that would be 16 twelfths. And now we can subtract 2 and 9 twelfths. And this will be a little bit easier. 9 from 16 would be 7 twelfths. And 2 from 4 would be 2. So negative 2 and 7 twelfths. Oh, this is an annoying problem. I don't know why I did it. Plus 1 half to the third power. Anything to the third power means multiply by itself three times. So this is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. And when multiplying fractions, it's top times top over bottom times bottom. So 1 half times 1 half times 1 half um, would just be 1 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 2 times 2. Um, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 eighth. The absolute value of negative 2 and 7 twelfths. Um, well, in this case, we just know that absolute value turns everything positive. And so it would just be 2 and 7 twelfths. Okay, we're getting so close, um, such as these last steps. What do 12 and 8 both go into? I need like denominators before I can add fractions, So, because we want to talk about adding or putting together the same size pieces before we can count them up. 
Um, and 8 and 12 both go into, you can multiply 8 times 12, but if you think about it for a second, you'll realize they both go into 24. So this would be 2, and how many 24ths? Um, well, we multiply 12 times 2, so 7 times 2 would be 14. And how many 24ths is 1 eighth? Well, you multiply the 8 times 3, so multiply by the 1 times 3, and you'd get uh, 3 24ths. When you add these all together, I'm so sorry for scrunching everything and moving it around my beautiful face. Uh, 2 plus four, 2 and 14 24ths plus 3 24ths would just be 2 and 17 24ths. Hopefully you showed all that work with me. You absolutely need to. It'll take up a little bit of room, but that's okay. Now the practice problems are not quite as involved, so they'll take you a little less space, but I need you to do your best on them. Number one is the absolute value of 5 minus 7 plus 2 times 21. So follow Gemma, order of operations, make sure you pay attention to all those symbols. And the second one is negative 5 and 6 tenths plus the quantity of 2 and 3 tenths squared plus 9 and 8 tenths. So make sure you're following Gemma. Grouping symbols first, and then once you're inside the grouping symbols, still follow Gemma again, just inside the grouping symbol. Do your best. Uh, I know you'll do great. Did great work during this video, and I'll see you soon.